the Earth has its own way of cooling rising temperatures. Scientists have long speculated the Earth has a natural thermostat that regulates global temperatures by increasing or decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, a new study suggests this could be true. Researchers have found a correlation between greater deposits of lithium in limestone rocks and warmer periods in the planet's history, when the Earth's weathering thermostat sped up. Carbon dioxide traps heat in the Earth's atmosphere. A dip in carbon dioxide levels can potentially cause an ice age, while a spike can make the planet heat up. The Earth regulates carbon dioxide through a process called the weathering thermostat. Carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere when it dissolves in rainwater and combines with rocks to form bicarbonate. When rocks dissolve in water, the bicarbonate combines with calcium to form limestone, locking carbon dioxide inside. Movement of tectonic plates then draws the limestone under the Earth's crust. The carbon dioxide eventually returns to the atmosphere when it separates from the limestone and is thrust out in volcanic eruptions. According to researchers, the Earth's thermostat responds to changes in the planet's temperature. Heat speeds up the weathering process, while cold slows it down. Other influences on the climate include solar activity, the growth of vegetation, and the impact of human activity. Scientists believe the Earth's natural thermostat cannot keep up with man-made climate change and are now looking into ways to artificially speed up the weathering process to counter global warming. A hotter global climate could lead to a lot more rainfall. The future may be rainier than expected. A new study prepared by scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory shows the amount of rain in tropical regions may increase in the future due to global warming. The atmospheric general circulation above the equator is known as the Hadley cell, which includes a wide zone of rising air. The zone has been observed to be narrowing over the past 30 to 40 years due to climate change. This causes a decrease in tropical high clouds. The decrease leads to a cooler tropical atmosphere, which then requires increased latent heating to balance the cooling from high cloud shrinkage. This leads to increased precipitation that would occur primarily over the tightened convective zones near the equator. NASA's study also highlights the intensified hydrological cycle that comes with a wet gets wetter and dry gets drier spatial pattern. That doesn't sound like a good thing, does it? Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century, and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate. Climate change has already caused islands to vanish. A new study led by University of Queensland researchers say that changes in global climate and the subsequent sea level rise has already led to the loss of multiple Pacific islands. A team of Australian scientists say that Isabel, one of the main islands of the Solomon Archipelago, has already lost five of its reef islands. Another six islands on Isabel have declined in area by more than 20% between 1947 and 2014. Meanwhile, residents of the island of Nuatambu have been forced to relocate to the nearby main island of Choiseul because of flooding. Of the dozens of homes that once stood on Nuatambu, at least 11 have already been swept away by the rising waters. While the global average rate of sea level rise has been 3.2 millimeters per year since 1993, the Solomon Islands have experienced an average rise by about 7 to 10 millimeters per year since 1994. The research team, who published their study in the journal Environmental Research Letters on Friday, discovered that the sea level rise has destroyed villages that have existed since the 1930s and has displaced numerous communities. Thought climate change predictions were scary. Well, they just got a whole lot scarier. 
The possible effects of climate change are far worse and could come far sooner than we previously thought. So says James Hansen, a leading climate change researcher who was among the first to warn the public about the serious effects of the buildup of carbon dioxide. The former director of NASA's Institute for Space Studies, along with 18 other leading climate scientists, published a paper this week predicting rapid sea level rises could happen within decades. A team of researchers' primary claim that as the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica melt, a layer of cold fresh water will build up over the ocean, trapping warmer, salty ocean water, with which it doesn't easily mix, underneath the surface, and thereby leading to a feedback loop that causes ice shelves to melt even more rapidly effectively slowing down and possibly shutting down ocean circulation. An idea apparently not too dissimilar from the premise of the 2004 disaster movie, The Day After Tomorrow. The scientists believe that this ice melting will cool polar regions of the globe and warm areas around the equator, causing stark temperature variances that could make superstorms, such as Hurricane Sandy, which struck the U.S. East Coast with devastating effect in 2012, far more frequent. To argue their case, the researchers controversially claim that storms during the warm Eemian period 120,000 years ago were powerful enough to lift massive boulders, 1,000 tons in size, from the bottom of the ocean and hurl them ashore. Hansen and his team believe a multimeter sea level rise could occur before the end of the century and envelop all of the planet's coastal cities. Despite the dire predictions, Hansen, in an accompanying video, explained that there may possibly still be an opportunity to reverse this worrying trend, saying, quote, I doubt that we have passed the point of no return, but frankly, we're not certain of that. Huge crack threatens Antarctic ice shelf. The effects of global warming have reached even the coldest corners of the world, and now threaten to collapse Antarctica's fourth largest ice shelf. The Larsen Sea Ice Shelf sits on the northernmost part of the Antarctic Peninsula and is slightly smaller than Scotland. The entire area consists of a thick sheet of ice that extends from ice caps on land and floats over deep ocean waters. Warming temperatures have caused cracks to form across Larsen Sea since 2011, with the rift growing 22 kilometers and widening to 350 meters in the past few months. The now 130-kilometer-long rift may soon cause about 10% of the ice shelf to break off. The partial loss of Larsen Sea will not itself raise sea levels, but ice being held back by the shelf may flow faster into the sea and contribute to its global rise. Scientists likewise fear that the loss of a huge chunk of ice will render the Larsen Sea ice shelf unstable and cause it to disintegrate, like Larsen's A and B before it.